When you think of the NES or Famicom, there is a genre that is severely lacking in representation. Fighting games. And not beat-em-ups or brawlers, there's plenty of those. No, I'm talking about classic, one-on-one, single-screen, horizontal, 2D fightification. Now, the Famicom did fare a bit better than the Nintendo Entertainment System, and I haven't looked at a true fighting game since the very first episode of Famicorner, Fighting Road. And it was... I mean, it was okay for 1988, but we are about to be living in the future. The future of 1993, when Nintendo released Joy Mech Fight. <laughs> might not look like a fighting game from the cover art, but it is an intense one. Excuse me, a cute one. Joy Mech Fight is what would happen if a fighter was made with Kirby styling and music. This is the story of two famous robot makers, Little Ermin and Ivan Warner. At least that's their names according to the translation patch that I dropped on the game. But in some instances, they're referred to as Little Emon and Ivan Walnuts. So, whichever you prefer. And being a fighting game, it's totally playable without the translation patch. You'll just miss out on the story. Either way, these two robot makers were best friends. But as we've learned from Rockman, Robot builders tend to struggle with long-lasting relationships, so in a classic Dr. Light, Dr. Wily scenario, Ivan decides to control an army of war robots and take over the world. Typical. I mean, look at that mustache. He was just asking to become an evil robot master overlord. So Ermin does the only logical thing, convert his robot Skopon into a fighting war robot. It's time to go up against Ivan's deadly creations. Each opponent has a unique fighting style and you are given the option of battling them in any order you choose. Initially, with Scapon, you'll be punching, kicking, and jumping your way to victory. But even with the limited inputs of the Famicom controller, you can still pull off special moves and each fighter comes jam-programmed with four different super special moves. And if you're struggling to figure out those moves on your own, you can go into the manual mode to test out different moves and practice. With a giant Famicom controller showing the inputs, oh, that is so awesome! I want that on my wall. And you know what? If that's not enough, you can even have the game demonstrate each individual move for you. So you've got no excuse for any suckitude in your gameplay. One of the first things you'll notice is the smooth fighting animations. Generally, fighting games weren't prevalent on the Famicom because it's difficult to mimic attacks with the more simplistic sprites of the 8-bit generation. And to get around that, the robot fighters are made up of several individual sprites that move separately to create this smooth motion of the attacks. And it works really well. Wait a second, fighting game where the characters have disconnected limbs giving smoother animations? What is this? The prequel to Balls? No. It's not. No, there's no relation. And thank God, because balls is terrible. Are, are terrible. Balls are terrible? Balls? Upon defeating one of the other limbless robot baddies, your bearded buddy Ermin will fly over in... Dr. Wily's capsule ship? Oh, these Mega Man connections. Hmm. Well, it's a good thing Ermin is on our side because he reprograms the defeated opponent to fight for our team. The robots you defeat will be unlocked for any future battles. And this cute and colorful little Famicom cartridge 
comes complete with an old-fashioned cell battery that allows the game to save automatically. Oh, now that is some amazing technology. If you need a break from the main story mode, you've got some other options. Choosing from any of the robots you've unlocked in the story mode, you can battle against the computer in a single fight, go head-to-head -head in a multiplayer fight, or watch as two computer players beat the snot out of each other. The robot bolts and nuts snot, that is. And <laughs> I just love how the menu shows two little Famicom consoles with their little attached controllers as arms facing each other like they're gonna battle. And look at their cute little faces. I never noticed it. It looks like they got a little face. But yeah, Famicom console cuteness aside, it's great that we got a legit multiplayer fighter on the Famicom. It's good stuff, especially once you've unlocked all the characters. I mean, that's some Super Smash Brothers level stuff right here. And go figure, Scapon appears as a sticker in Super Smash Brothers Brawl, so clearly Nintendo did not forget about our funny little robot fighter. All right, enough trivia, back to the robot carnage. When you defeat the first set of robots, Ivan will send out his first boss creation, a robot ostrich. Typical. Which looks pretty good despite the lack of connecting parts. But don't get pecked to death. Nobody wants that. And after plucking its metallic feathers, you'll be shown all of your final blows so far in the war. Ah, ah. Memories. But the game isn't over. You'll be sent on to the next stage to take on another group of evil robots. Like Zack and... Oh, sweet lord. Bok Bok. Bok Bok. <laughs> oh my god, you will forever be my favorite robot. Look his little round face. Oh, I love you, Bok Bok. <laughs> oh. But don't let the cuteness fool you. Be careful, because Bok Bok will tear your mess up. He is not an easy opponent. It's all trickery. Bok Bok just lures you in with his cuteness and then just murders you with it. It's sick. But back to the robot looks, most of the Stage 2 robots have really expressive features. Geo has this sort of big nose and toothy grin if you look at him just the right way and jibber well well jibber basically has two faces his night helmet and his derpy belly face I never thought i'd ever say that it's too bad jibber is one heck of an opponent with his super long reach i mean this is some dalsam level stretch here street fighter style and whenever i ended up in a frustrating battle my go-to fighter was flame by far the most powerful of your robots. His special attacks are, uh, what do they say? Beast mode. Even though the other robots offer various skills like speed or long distance attacks and strength, Flame continued to be the most powerful. I always turned to Flame and I was a bit disappointed because I really wanted to use the other characters more often. They're just so unique in the early stages of the game. I have to cut in again and say, I love the style of Joy Mac Fight. The characters have so much visual personality for just being fighting robots on an 8-bit system. Take that, Rise of the Robots! Trash game. Trash! It's a real shame that the robot character designer only ever worked on this game. Well, Noriyuki Harada, I salute you. Now when you defeat all of the violent yet super cute opponents, you'll take on Ra, which is basically a giant robot shield that kind of floats around. And then it's on to stage three with yet another set of robots to destroy. Unfortunately, the robots you battle after stage one are not unlocked for use in the story mode. I mean, I would destroy this game if I could use the wonderful hover for the story mode. I mean, look how cool he is! But whatever. Whatever game. Now, I gotta point this out. It's a bit of a shame that even though there are tons of characters, the later ones end up being simple palette swaps. I mean, 
they didn't even try with this one. Ghost on, ghost on. The game even tells you, oh, it's just Ra rebuilt as a ghost. What? What? I... <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't know you could build ghosts out of old robot parts. Who knew? Who knew? Eventually, your efforts in battle will take you all the way to the moon to face Ivan's greatest creation. It's just another kind of generic robot, but with some annoying long-range energy attacks. So good luck taking them out. And after the battle, old dumb dumb Ivan attempts to escape, but his crappy ship explodes for some reason. Leaving Erwin to pull him up to his own ship. And hold him tenderly. Are, are they... Are they gonna kiss? Oh, oh no, in fact, it seems Ivan has snapped out of whatever craziness overtook him, and they become besties once again. Meanwhile, Scapon returns to being a stand-up comedian robot. Well, of course that's what he was originally built for. Stand-up comedy. <sighs> now you can take on the story mode yet again at a higher difficulty, but I think we have seen enough to know that Joy Mech Fight is a really good Famicom exclusive. And this game pushed the Famicom to its aging limits. It's obvious just by looking at the tons of varied stages to battle in, with insane layers of parallax scrolling in the backgrounds, like this desert fighting arena, which really gives a sense of depth. And just look at that sunset. Oh, oh man. You could just get lost in it, right? Right? You want to get lost in that 8-bit sunset? Mm. Plus, the stages offer infinite horizontal scrolling. If both fighters continue moving, there is no ending invisible wall that prevents you from moving further back. It just keeps going. I kind of like that. I like it. And of course, it's a late-release Famicom game, so you know the music is on point. If you end up pressing select and B on the title screen, you get to enter the secret sound test mode and have fun getting lost in all the amazing music Joy Mac Fight has. Impressive music, graphics, story, character variety, this game was a great send-off for the Famicom, as it was one of the last Nintendo-developed games to be released for the console. And this game definitely brings a lot of joy. A lot of joy, huh? Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, probably not my best. Not my best. <laughs>